Okay, everybody, doing something a little bit different today with the Halfway Healthy Show. Doing a little bit of uh, just me and Ziggy at the keyboard talking about the health news and what's popping off. And first off, we would be remiss to not mention everybody's favorite topic right now. It's all over social media. It's the Apple Vision Pro AR headset. So they are marketing this thing for rich people, it seems like, is $3,500. And I've heard a lot of people mention that this is obviously not going to be for the everyday consumer, but it's cool as fuck. I mean, it's, I've seen some videos on it where people are showing that one, it's a, it's an AR headset. So people that don't know it's augmented reality, which basically means that it is changing the environment around you. Whereas a VR headset is going to be all of its own environment that you're immersed into. So basically, uh, and I actually scroll down a little bit for me, Ziggy, you can kind of see people can see like where that girl's standing there. Scroll up just a little bit. There you go. So, like this girl is standing there with the headset on and she literally has an external screen. Of course, she's the only one that can see that, but it has its whole own unit uni or sorry, it has its own user interface that you can basically use as a computer. So you can pull up multiple monitors on there and just stand in your home and through your glasses, you can run a computer. So you can literally look around at your screens it has sensors all over it, front, back, bottom, inside, outside, and it tracks your eyes. And one of my favorite creators online is his name's MKBHD. And I would encourage everybody to go look at his video on this because he actually was there whenever they released it. They gave him 30 minutes to be able to test it. And he said that the eye tracking is absolutely insane and like almost scary where he, he can look around his room and he can look at a tiny device in the corner and the actual headset will zoom in on that. Like it'll know that he's looking at that tiny thing in his in the corner because it's tracking his eyes. And then to click, you just put your fingers together. So you just tap your index finger and your thumb together and it clicks. And then you can grab a screen, scroll up, and you can do all this with your hands in your lap, with your hands on the side, with your hands above your head, doesn't matter. Like it, it knows where your hands are at. And just the whole thing is absolutely insane. And if you scroll down a little bit more, Ziggy, you can see, keep going, keep going to the next. Yeah. So stop right there. So you can see the headset itself is completely made of metal and glass. So I've heard people say that it's pretty fucking heavy, but it's really, really high quality, which you would of course hope so with $3,500 price tag. And there are some downsides. I'll get to that in a second though. Cause I wrote some notes here. Uh, What's interesting is that it has optic ID. So kind of like how your phone has the thumbprint, this has optic ID. So it actually scans your eyeball and it knows it's you just from that. So when you put the headset on, it'll unlock based off of whose eyes are in the headset. Right now it only will run. It's supposed to kick off early, I think Q1 of next year, which is pretty crazy. And they released it so that everybody can start creating apps and things for it. But Basically, it'll unlock for you. It'll have a bunch of Apple apps and you can scroll if you want to Z and look up anything else that's on there. Um, oh, go back up, go back up. So that right there, that little dinosaur image. So MKBHD was talking about whenever he tried it, they wanted everybody to look at this. You can, you, they turn, you can turn over and you can see this giant T-Rex that's like breaking through a wall and you could click on the wall and the T-Rex wasn't there. You click on the wall and the T-Rex breaks through the wall, which is, which is crazy. And it's like, it feels like it's in the room with you. And then a, a little butterfly was flying around and then it landed on, on his finger. And he said, it was amazing. You could see everything in, in like grave detail, but it kind of was like that uncanny Valley feeling where you kind of knew it wasn't real because there's no haptics with this. Whereas like some of the other VR headsets and air headsets have handles and grips that have like feedback in them. So you could feel that butterfly landing your finger. This was literally just his finger that he, you know, he could see it and he's like, Oh, I can't feel anything. Oh yeah. I'm in, I'm wearing a VR headset, but still cool. Nonetheless. Oh, very cool. And I bet uh, they're going to come out with those things soon. You know, yeah. once these start selling, they'll come out with all the uh, expansions, right? Exactly. So get all your money. But uh, for 30, what is this? $3,500. Mm. And it's the the V the V one right, so it's going to have a lot of yeah. issues, I'm sure. But what I thought was cool is again, like I said earlier, the point why they're releasing this now is because now everybody's going to be like, "Holy shit, we need to make apps and games for this to be oh, able yeah. to be released in early 
next year, right? So I think they're gonna make some amazing stuff. Right now it's all only Apple, but they started saying like one of the coolest things I thought was, you know, imagine this being adopted by your favorite sports team. You know, you wear this headset and for five bucks, you can get courtside tickets and you can watch, you know, you can watch the Lakers play courtside and be, I mean, of course you're going to not be, you're not going to have the vibrations and things in the stadium, but you're going to be able to be courtside, listen to everything live. I guarantee you that's going to be a thing. And watching your favorite movie, Pixar is probably going to release things that are way immersive that you can get involved with. And so I think it's a really fucking cool idea. And they crushed it. I mean, people are talking about it everywhere. And I, well, my you know, Twitter's full of it. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if this is true, but I did see some today that, uh, said there was a noticeable like gasp at the, uh, like at the presentation when they announced how expensive it was. Like, yes. it was like oh, yeah. You know? And I, you know, so the thing is, is like, I mean, that's what literally the next, the next 10 months is going to be me fucking grinding so I can buy one of these. Cause I want to be one of the oh, first yeah. ones to try it. Cause it'd be so fucking cool. And, it, of course, it's a, it's crazy expensive. But you think about, like, I mean, almost all of these things started out to be very expensive. I mean, if you put it in comparison, uh, we spend eleven hundred dollars on our iPhones. Yes, every exactly. Year, right? Exactly. We, we upgrade every year, so that's really not that far out of reach when compared. You know, when compared, so yes, to so, other Apple products, right? They're the most expensive out of all of them. Yeah. But to me, their quality is a little better. Exactly. So. And so, some some funny things too. Is like, I just imagine. So there's a feature that people are talking about where it. It has a it has a camera that, ref, or it's it's a screen that is reflecting outward, so nobody can see it but the people around you. And basically, you can toggle it on and off to be more immersive or less immersive. So you can toggle it to where you can see everything in your environment, but you can also interact with things, or you can toggle it to where it will just create an environment for you. And the, the thing that's a little bit funky is that if you look at a lot of these ads it shows this the picture here is not great because it makes it look really good but it shows people's eyes that way you can't have like some fucking creeper sitting on a park bench you know staring, like staring at staring up at some you. girl's skirt with like you know <laughs> and it's just like glasses on like you can you actually see their eyes but it's not an actual you know live image of their eyes it's a reflection of what the camera is reading and so their eyes are like bugged out and it just it, it looks fucked up oh, but it's kind of funny and now I'm wondering, like, people with lazy eyes, what it's gonna do? <laughs> if like, if they have one, if they have one wandering eye off to the side, and they're like Whoa. looking straight, at <laughs> what that looks Good like gosh. on the outside of the screen. I'm um, seeing V2, V3 already in like sunglass form. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. slim this down, make this like a, a hopefully an everyday used product. I'm sure. Yeah. And they have to. And like back, like on that note, to make this an everyday used product they've got to increase the battery life. And everybody's talking about oh, that too. Yeah. It's two hours, which, That's you know, pitiful. it's pitiful. And one of the things that they're, you know, touting is that you can, you know, this is going to be a great experience for a movie. Well, guess what? Every fucking <laughs> yeah, movie what now, movie you're going to watch <laughs> every fucking movie nowadays is, you know, three and a half hours long or three hours. Almost oh, all yeah. of them are over two oh, hours. Yeah. And so the big thing is, is, and they were saying, you know, people are going to make external batteries that you can attach and you can attach USB-C to the battery and run it to a, you know, run to your wall and you can watch as much time as you want unlimited, but still two hours is, is pretty minuscule. Oh, that's a big con. I mean, again, cause most, any tech device, like that's what they tout themselves on, right? Is the battery life. Exactly. And then the last thing I'll say on this is that, I mean, I guess two things. One is where I can see it going with health, you know, I think that mm -hmm. it would be, it would be pretty nice, especially with how advanced this AR is, is to, to be able to look at food, you know, and be able to tell you, Oh, scan it and exactly tell you everything. Yeah. yeah. Scan it say like, how many calories are in this? Is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Kind of like that humane device we talked about before, yeah, yeah. but even a step up and as well as just being able to imagine if they get this thing light and you can do workouts, like what if you were able to get into like the fucking Nike gym and do a workout with one of the Nike personal trainers and you feel like you're there oh, in the yeah. gym exercising, that would be amazing. And then the, the other negative, which I think is a big negative and not even specifically for this, but just as we advance in technology and struggling to be present, one of the videos they showed, which is it's cool, but it's very sad and depressing is this dad wearing these glasses or that wearing the vision pros and he's at a, his kid's birthday party. And he clicks a button on the top and he's recording it as like a POV, right? So a video that he can look back and remember in his own 
vision and his own actual That's cool. acuity. It's very cool. But then they showed the video of his daughter like blowing out the birthday cake and all of her friends are around them and it like scans over to the dad just like standing awkwardly with these giant bulky <laughs> head. Like and then so you start thinking like what are the people around you oh, yeah. thinking? Whenever you're standing there, you're not in the moment. You're literally just you're just yep. you know, recording something. And so I think it is extremely cool, but it's again just like the situation, you know, you can pull it back of like there's a lot of artists that get really upset when you're at their concert and you're recording instead of just fucking being there and enjoying the moment, having a moment to remember you. It's very hard to do both and hold your phone. You're looking at it, making sure you have the right angle and you're not really immersed in the actual. Well, event. let's be real. Are we as you know, as a whole, are we really worried about the moment, right? Anything that goes on, what's the first thing everybody does? Yeah, exactly. About they your they pull out their phone. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and that's, so I, I think that already we're not, mentally mature enough to make that connection. And so I just worry that this will make it even harder, especially as it becomes, like you said, turns into more of glasses versus these giant more goggles. Mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the cost is going to go down over time. You know, if this does catch traction or they do perfect things and, and I don't see how it doesn't. I mean, I think this is going to oh, be, yeah. I think it's going to be huge. Uh, but yeah, we can, we can leave that there. I just think it's a very, was there any more down below at the bottom of this article? Uh, let me look. I don't, I think I saw you get to the end yeah, sort of, but, um, you know, and again on the price tag, I, th- I think that compared to what you get with like quest or any, I mean, quest has a pro that's $1,500, which of course is two grand cheaper. I mean, that's nothing to sniff at, but it's still rather expensive. And in general, these things are expensive to make, but it's mostly the quality. I think that makes us so expensive with being all metal and glass, you know, they're not, they're not going to be cheap to make. And I think that once we get these things tested and everything like that, they'll, they'll of course drop down in price, but. Oh, and you'll see a bunch of, you know, other companies, you know, besides quest or what was that? Facebook, Facebook, yeah. uh, well, you know, and meta. Apple meta, sorry, Oof. uh, <laughs> before, you know, these two companies have to lower their prices. There's going to be others. Yeah. Somebody's going to come out with a cheaper one. hundred percent. So I wanted to start here, even though, you know, again, we trickled some, some health in there, not specifically health news that everybody's fucking talking about it. And I think it's really cool. And, we're going to see a lot. I mean, once this will cool down a little bit, we'll see it pop back up next year. So be ready for it. But go over to, um, let's see, we'll go over to, no, the far, the far left, the U S or this one made me laugh. This article, dude, it's like, how, how are we still making these connections in 2023? This article was written last, last week or the end of the week before U <laughs> S surgeon general says social media may be hazardous to teen health. No fucking shit. It's like, and look at this guy's face too. He's like, uh, we had no idea, but we, uh, we started doing some digging in and it looks like our teens are fucking wanting to kill themselves because they're seeing everybody else and how good they're doing. And all they can do is, you know, look at everybody else in their, their lean bodies and wonder why they're not that way. It's just, it's sad, but I think this has been going on forever. Oh, it's I mean, a fake image and it'll, uh, you know, unfortunately social media will never change. Right. It's no, just, a, I, they want to try to censor it in some way and yeah. have some, some, something to blame on it. Yeah. Go down a little bit on this one. It's just, it's a, oh, so they, they're calling it a public advisory warning. There are ample indicators that social media here, go back up ample, ample indicators that social media can also have a profound risk of harm to the mental health and well being of children and adolescents. And let, let alone even like, you know, not even adolescents and children, adults. I know plenty of adults that get in their head and upset whenever they see fucking Rachel out at the beach and her and her, you know, ripped body and they're pissed off because they can't get a vacation because their boss is working them to oh, death. And, FOMO. Know. And it's all subconscious, right? Even as much as somebody probably wants to be like, oh no, I don't do that. No, you do. You do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, again, I, it just makes me laugh that like, why, why is the, why is a surgeon general coming out and saying <laughs> this at this point? What, what happened in his life? Is it like his daughters just hit, you know, 14 and he's like, we have a real epidemic on our hands with social media. And I, I do not. I do not envy the social media creators and all the, the hassle that that puts on them and, and just the emotional trauma of knowing what they're doing. And, it, and I'm not one to like just completely cram on social media. I know for myself, like firsthand, I know that the less time I spend on social media, usually the better I feel in general, but I do love it. I mean, it's fun. You can see what people are doing. You can also get introduced to a lot of other things, uh, you know, that you wouldn't be introduced to without having it. But yeah, it's just, why are we still making these posts? We all fucking know what's going on. The, the next one, we've talked about this in the podcast before, is the Neuralink, which is Elon Musk's brand. Uh, they are the ones that are trying to put a link in people's or a chip in people's heads that allows them to be able to basically control a computer 
or access a computer in their brains. So think about this on, you know, what we just talked about with the Apple headset. It's like even the next level. Uh, and there was some comments where they weren't really sure if it was going to get, there was a big lawsuit that went out because of them possibly, I can't say possibly now I sound like I'm fucking backing them up. Cause I have no idea what's going on, but they, they were allegedly harming this is the, not an ad. what'd you say? This is not an ad, right? This is not an ad for Neuralink. I'm not backing what they do to monkeys, but I, again, I have no fucking idea. I did read that though. They were catching a lot of backlash before, you know, all this came out that like they were killing a lot of animals. Yeah. Uh, and mostly so, like monkeys. I know I watched the full, whatever it was, hour and a half stream they did on Neuralink probably, I don't know, six months ago. And they were, you know, really adamant about saying how they weren't torturing the animals. They were giving them a lot of reward and uh, allowing them to drink smoothies and shit, basically saying that they had great lives. Um, and that they, you know, they get under anesthesia when they get these things implanted and they all got a Tesla. I mean, exactly. Yeah. All these, all these monkeys walked away with a Tesla. Like what else can you ask for? Like it's more than, more than we can do. Yeah, exactly. But the, I mean, I'm just interested because again, they had all this flack and then it kind of trickled out of the news and then all of a sudden boom, it popped back up and said that they were FDA approved to start doing some human trials, which Mm -hmm. is crazy. And I'm not going to be the one to jump on the operating table and get it done first, but fuck if I'm not going to be the one to at least research it and see how these people are feeling. And if they, if they aren't short circuiting whenever they're walking around doing their shopping, I might be on the, I don't know. Let's well, see. and their Let's claims see. are, you know, they're claiming to bring back vision and, uh, you know, some really crazy things. So if that actually happens, you're really talking about revolutionary stuff, um, you well, know, in it, science. and Exactly. And that's where they're, they're wanting to do that first. So I'm glad you brought that up because it's not necessarily, they're not going for the, supercomputer in your brain right off the bat. They're, they're trying to fix or at least alter some brain disorders and like Parkinson's people who were born deaf, being able to restore their hearing, which is fucking incredible. And I bet you that population would be like, yeah, sign me up, shove a scalpel in my head and cut out a portion of my bone and put this in there. Cause I want to be able to hear for the first time. Right. So I think that it, it makes sense I hope that it works for people because I mean, I know a fuckload of people who have Parkinson's and again, even imagine if you're in your sixties or seventies and your prognosis is horrible with Parkinson's, you can't move, you're walking, you know, shuffling from your couch to your bathroom. You can't talk. You're shaking the whole time. You have these tremors. Like what else do they have to lose? A lot of these people don't have anything to lose. Well, and you know, to play devil's advocate here i think we all forget when stuff like this comes out social media being one right we all focus on all the pros that it can bring nobody's talking about the cons exactly right until 10 years down the road and it's already too late or you know detrimental damage has been done so i think we really need to talk about those things before we start uh giving this you know fda approval in my opinion yeah Um, but the thing is though is i definitely i hear what you're saying but in terms of in terms of research and development and actually getting these things in, you it's so hard to to know to know until yeah. you put it in a person's head. Right, or, you right. know, and, and and I think that obviously this is probably going to be our first introduction into a very invasive procedure that maybe stems outside of what we're used to in technology. You know, but imagine the first person to get a a, a knee replacement, like people getting their bones cut out of their body and put a metal, a metal knee in their body. I mean, that at first that had to be, we didn't have social media around, but just imagine the, the, the amount of mental stress that had to be on the first patient to be like, okay, let's do it. My knee's hurting that bad that I'm ready to do it. And I, and you can do that in a monkey all day, but as soon as you put it into a human, you can actually get verbal feedback. You can follow them. You can see where that sixth month outcome is. I think that's where we really start to see where these are. And I don't even know, does it say in there how many people, or if they have any trials set up? Not on this link, but I was also thinking, how are you going to charge this thing? I think they're going to have, so a lot of um, uh, cochlear implants and things that people have if they have really bad hearing, uh, it's just a, there's a, like a kind of like a magnet. It's a magnet that you just hmm. click on. Yeah, so yeah. I would imagine, you know, it would be pretty funny if the first implementation is just like a plug in outlet in your wall. Or just like you plug to, it right into your ear. You got to sit on this. You got to sit by your wall and like, well, <laughs> let it charge, you know, while you're, hey, hey, I'm charging. <laughs> yeah, I'm charging. Leave me alone. <laughs> Give me like 15. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. But I, I you know, I, I probably, because I come from a background in, you know, having to read a lot of research papers and, and knowing, you know, like people get really upset about the, the mice trials and things like that because they're harming mice. And at the end, I'm not 
advocating for harming mice. But I also will say that we would not be anywhere near mm -hmm. where we are now in it, the medical field. Those. Exactly. You have yeah. to. And, and, you know, hopefully we develop a way to mimic the human body and the human reaction. But the, the way that our brains work, we still don't understand. We still don't fully understand how they work and how all the intricacies align with one another, how they connect to the rest of our body. We have a rudimentary understanding, but like, Oh, we change our, we change our uh, information. It seems exactly. like every few years, you know, on the knowledge that we know about our brains or, you know, and, mental and, health alone. Right. And so whenever you start to think, okay, how do we bridge, how do we bridge the trial to the human body? Would you rather be that person that jumps into the first trial knowing that this device came from testing of a mouse? Death row inmates. Okay. Hey, that not, that's not a bad idea. Let's round up the death row inmates. The people that are doing the trash on the side of the highway, we drive by and say, hey, listen, you can pick up trash for the next six years or let's get you on the stretcher. We'll roll you back. You won't even know what's happening and we'll get you back. Dude, I would. Community you service imagine? wrote off. Bro, yeah. And it's like, hey, I, yeah, I've, you know, I, I massacred an entire family. And I'm in, I'm on death row, you know, yeah, I would sign me up. I'd I mean, do it. Yeah. At that point, you're not hurting animals. You're already, these I think people that's a have already great done horrible idea. things. That's so, a great idea. Uh, we have to advance somehow. Yeah. Okay. We well, the price. Yeah. well, you know, I'll set a goal for myself. I'll say in the next, the next four weeks, we'll get, we'll get Elon on the podcast and we'll pitch, we'll pitch this inmate, uh, inmate idea. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I mean, they have, they have work programs. I'm sure that I'm sure that they have some sort of a, uh, trial participation thing that they do. I don't know how it all Give works. Give them a Tesla. I mean, <laughs> it's true. You say, Hey, I know you're on death row, but we'll park a Tesla out back and we'll put your name. You get a vanity plate <laughs> with your name on it. You know, <laughs> whatever you want to be called, we'll put it on there, baby. If whatever you want, and we'll, you know, you can give it to your kids or you can just let it die in the parking lot. But yeah, I think that's a great idea. And I'm sure Elon's got Tesla's backed up that he can give to some death row inmates. He's got plenty. He's got plenty. Yeah. All right. What do we got next? All this right. one Go, yeah, the 26%. Click on that one. This one's pretty crazy. I, I think this is probably a little light, but I read this and thought it was pretty interesting. So it basically just says, you know, things that we all know and see. 26% of students reveal an alarming rise of nicotine vaping in schools. I believe it. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, it's a quarter, which I guess, you know, that's, that's quite a bit. But I, I would probably say, I think it's just like active using. I would sure, I'm sure like people who have tried it is even more, right? Um, but, you know, this is coming from Canada. So, you know, I phew, you What's imagine. What's smoking age there? Is it? I think it's probably it's 18. I think it's, okay. I think drinking and smoking is 18. And I don't know. Look it up. We'll see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I know that um, I would, I would dare say it's got to be higher in the u.s the smoking you know the vaping percentage well, we just raised our smoking to 21 so did we really yeah damn a couple years ago that. you're just an old boy. what should you know about canada's oh. new alcohol guidelines oh did they raise theirs too uh let's see the difference between the new wow. and old recommendations is stark what is this while acknowledging that 40 percent of people living in canada age 15 older oh that's just a statistic okay yeah scroll down what are the new guidelines there we go go down Keep going. There we go. Uh, what are the new guidelines? Here we go. Uh, 15, a cap of 15 drinks for men to 10 drinks. Oh, they were recommending no more consumption than 15 drinks on a daily. Oh, God. let's, let's, let's check somewhere else. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. That's not a great, uh, that's not a, a great thing. Maybe we should be a little more descriptive. Yeah. What is the drinking age in Canada? Legal drinking age is this is Wikipedia, but drinking age of 18. 19, 18. Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry. Majority of it. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, that's fine. I mean, that's, that's what we, and I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, if we're going back to the vaping thing, I think it's unfortunate. I, you know, it's your high school years, your experimental years, you're probably going to fuck up. You're going to do some shit that you probably won't continue to do whenever you're out. But you know, do I want half of the high school population hitting vapes? I probably not. Cause I think, you know, people talk about this, but there's, there's some benefits to, to nicotine, but we don't really know what's happening whenever we vape things. And whenever you have kids that are like fucking 14, 15, 16, you know, you do some dumb things and who knows what that's going to lead to long term. but it's just interesting. I think, you know, back when I was in school, we didn't have vapes, but now it's, they're just so accessible. You can go buy them and 
I don't even, I mean, it's pretty easy to get somebody who's older than you to go buy you a vape and, and throw it to you. So oh, kids are going to find anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I don't know much to say about it. It's just, I saw it and I thought it was pretty interesting. So we can, we can kick Probably on. Probably social media's fault. It is social. Maybe that's why the surgeon general was like, <laughs> my daughter starts asking me why she can't get a, a nicotine vape. And I told her. They took her jewel. Yeah. They took her jewel from her at school and she hit her teacher in the face with a chair. <laughs> and now I had to go to the school. Yeah. Go to that next one. What is it? Forget. Yeah. Right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, scroll down a little bit. So this says, forget me not, how flavanols fight age-related memory loss. So this is basically just saying that a, I'll just read it. The study, a study by researchers from Columbia and Brigham, which can you trust Brigham? It's a bunch of, bunch of Mormons, but you know, it is what it is. It links age-related memory loss to a diet low in flavanols. So flavanols are, are nutrients that are found in fruits and vegetables. A uh, study found that replenishing these nutrients in adults over 60 improved performance on memory tests, including the importance of specific nutrients for optimal brain health and aging population. Not much to say about it, except for there's just, we're finding more and more on what's connected to the brain and how we can prevent memory loss and dementia. And I can tell you that that is one of the fucking saddest things that I can see mm -hmm. in, in the elderly population. When you go in and you're, you know, the wife doesn't remember who the husband is or her kids show up and she goes, Hey, who are you? And you just sit there and you're like, fuck, that's sad. And it's, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, eating a handful of blueberries every day is going to not have that happen, but it could decrease the risk and improve your chance of having better memory. And there's just so many things out there that you can consume in fruits and vegetables. Like don't just fucking write them off in general because you don't like fruits and vegetables. You can find one that you do like and just eat them. And again, this is just one instance that shows the benefits of consuming fruits and vegetables. There's a lot of, there's a lot of other ones, but just do it. Start now, start in your twenties, your thirties, your forties. But even this shows that if you start after you're 60, it's not too late, but just continue to do it. If you start off earlier, you're going to have even more benefits. This is what's it showing down here. Age-related memory loss linked to changes in the hippocampus. Yeah. So, you know, again, not a ton to say. It's just, just one of those things that, you know, start eating more fruits and vegetables. You're only going to benefit from it. The next one goes into what, you know, more of things that, that we're consuming. And I have seen, I've seen this pop up on social media more lately than I have in the last five, 10 years. And it's just talking about the negatives of alcohol, you know? Yeah. They've changed a lot of, the, you know, the wine theories. <clears throat> yeah. Well. I mean, that's something that, you know, I'll, I'll admit a couple years ago, I mean, and you, and you heard people on podcasts and on social media, YouTube talking about, there's this thing called resveratrol that comes from the, the process of fermenting grapes and putting it into wine. And they were saying that this stuff that comes from the wine can be beneficial if you have one to two glasses a night. And it turns Sales out tactic. Yeah. And the, the thing is, and maybe somewhere down the line, that was just something that was a sales tax that or sales tactic that got into physicians heads and other people's heads that are in the biohacking world and the health world in general that was able to kind of infiltrate itself into social media and people were like fuck yeah I can drink one or two glasses a night it doesn't seem to be that it just really you know I've said this on the podcast before I've wrote about it the more and more that comes out you're drinking poison and I'm not here to say that like I don't I had a drink last weekend, right? But I try to limit if I do have some, which is maybe like once a week. Sometimes I skip a week or two and just, I don't go out of my way to have a drink. But if I'm in a social environment and I want to have a beer, I have a beer, you know? And I, I try and I'm pretty good at limiting myself to two in a sitting or, or in a day. And then usually if I have a couple, that's usually the only drinks that I'll have like in the span of a week. Because again, it's, it is poison and it's a it's fun. But at the end of the day, if you drink more than that, you're going to feel like shit. Your body has to process that alcohol somehow. And this article shows that heavy drinking actually je jeopardizes muscle growth. So people who are trying to bulk up, who are trying to gain muscle drinking or yeah, drinking to excess actually decreases. So this one says that given individuals with large bodies generally possess more muscle mass, the researchers adjusted their analysis for body size. They also considered other influencing factors, blah, blah, blah. They said that individuals who consume alcohol heavily may be jeopardizing their muscle health and predisposing themselves to frailty as they age. Study utilizes statistic models, blah, blah, blah. The least muscle mass were consuming at least 10 units of alcohol a day, about a, or about one bottle of wine. 
shit, if you look at a one bottle of wine, I know people who drink a whole bottle of wine, you know, that's a, <laughs> that a is, bit. <laughs> yeah. So, and it is, and it is quite a bit, but again, you know, if it's going to decrease your muscle mass, even people who aren't wanting to bulk or get bigger, decreasing muscle mass leads to frailty as you age, like I said. So then you're looking at possible bones breaking, decreased muscle mass is also linked to a ton of other things as you age. So it's just not good. So drinking in excess, you want to limit that of course, to as low as you can, but it's just, you know, again, the more and more we look, the more and more we find out that, you know, drinking is not great and we need them to, you know, moderation, moderation, moderation. That's really the key here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else from this that uh, is, is worth mentioning. I think it's pretty crazy that they, they look to people with who drink 10 alcohol drinks a day. That's, I mean, that's, that's alcoholism, brother. That is what that is. Um, let's see. We saw that it really became a problem when people were drinking 10 units a day, equivalent to a bottle of wine, alcohol consumption and muscle mass were measured cross-sectionally people at the same time. So we can't be sure of the casual link. Alcohol may be harmful effects on muscle mass at higher levels of consumption. And we know that losing muscle as we age leads to problems. Okay. We know this. Stop drinking alcohol or drink it in moderation. Okay. This is interesting. Came across another article that said that cannabis, especially high consumptions of cannabis, can worsen male fertility. But are they permanent? That's the headline. So this could be read both ways. Some stoners are like, fuck, I don't want kids. I'm going to keep token up and I'm great. Who cares? Other people are like, oh shit, if I'm trying to have a baby, maybe I need to decrease the amount of smoking I'm doing. So this just says the research builds on previous disco- discoveries made by Osu indicating that persistent use of cannabis could potentially impair male fertility in animal studies. This will aid in advising patients about the implications of THC consumption when planning for conception. So, um, Groundbreaking research among the first to show that ceasing long-term THC use can partially restore the adverse effects of male reproduction health in non-human primates. So another example of them doing testing in primates and seeing how it, how it affects, uh, how it could possibly affect humans. So just interesting. I think it's something for people to consider, you know, this is not definitive data, but if I think it's one of those situations where if you're trying to have kids and you're having trouble having kids because of a fertility issue and you are a consumer of THC, it could be a, something that you could try to step away from the THC, get yourself tested again, see if your sperm count goes up, if you're more, if you have more motility. And then for people who aren't wanting to have kids, fucking smoke it up. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I figured this would have been brought up with your uh, episode with Dr. Ryman. Do you guys not talk about this at all? Mm-mm. It's a good question. Well, this for is her next. Yeah, uh, it is. If she's you, on exactly, and people that don't know, Dr. Ryman is a cannabis expert. She, um, which is always a popular episode to have her on because she she knows her shit. But this, I mean, this came out a week and a half ago. So I don't know if that's okay. something that's that's relatively new in the in the research field. But something interesting, I think, for again people to at least consider. And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of cases or people that, you know, hop up and say that they smoke every day and they've, you know, they've well, it had, affects everybody differently. Yeah, I think that's been you yeah, know, proven. They smoke every day and they have six illegitimate children out there somewhere. And they're like, <laughs> I have no problem. Right. But I think it's something to consider and it's subjective for everybody, but something interesting to think about. Last thing on the agenda, which, you know, I know I love Ziggy loves. We all love the new AI stuff that's coming out. And I just think it's hilarious because they had to make an article that said what you should and shouldn't ask chat GPT for medical advice. And it's like, I'm just imagining somebody who's like sitting at their table. People don't know chat GPT. It's a language model. It's an AI where you can type it in and it's a bot that scans all the internet and spits out answers. And it's very, very good. You can write code. You can ask it medical questions. You can ask it, you know, history questions. You can ask it to write an essay on, to kill a mockingbird for you and get an A plus. You can have it rewrite things to make it sound better. You can have it give you rough drafts for articles, whatever you want to do it, it'll do it for you in an amazing way, better than a lot of humans can do. And you can also ask it medical advice, like I said. And people, again, they had to write an article because I'm sure people out there are, you know, they're going to their doctor and they're like, my ankle and my foot are now detached and I don't know why. It's been it's been three months. I asked ChatGPT you know, every week, cause it kept on getting worse. I kept typing, you know, there's a, there's a cut in my ankle and it's starting to rot. I, it's starting to have a foul smell and some steam coming off of it. What does that mean? And chapter two is like, you're fine. Put some Neosporin on it and wrap it up. So I did it and I kept doing that for weeks and weeks. And now I'm here in your office and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And they're like, I think that 
people are probably going to take this to the extreme and like use this as their, their doctor, even though it can pull things. And I've seen doctors even say that they've gotten on here and typed in some things like they've given like a patient scenario and it's actually given some pretty good advice, but don't fucking use this and replace and like in, in replacement of your doctor. It doesn't make any sense. You oh, know? I'm sure doctors are pissed. Cause you know, people are coming in and be like, well, you know, chat GBT actually told me it yeah. could be this. Yeah. And then, and then, and then they're like, <laughs> like and then the doctor's okay. like, don't let's chat GBT. And they're like, hold on a second. Let me pull up this article where it shows that chat GBT actually passed the medical exam, you know, with flying colors. And what did you score on your medical exam? And, <laughs> yeah, and they're exactly. like, hold, hold on, hold on. Don't get me in that. Don't paint me in that corner. But no, so I think you're right though. I think doctors probably are going to be are pissed. I will say that, you know, the majority of the general population isn't using this stuff. They don't even know what the fuck chat GPT is, but I know for myself, I've Googled some stuff or I've, I've researched some stuff on there and asked medical advice just to see what it says in my field. And again, it's pretty good, but back to what we've talked about multiple times, it's, it's so subjective and having something, having a doctor that knows your medical history and knows your family history is so important when making these connections and deciding how to treat you. So, and of course, ChatGPT can't write you write you prescriptions, which when it can, that will be a fucking Not nightmare. Yet. Yeah, I was say whenever you drop to your pharmacist <laughs> and they're like, they're like, yeah, we got an order for you from ChatGPT. You, you ready to pick it up? And they're just, you know, they become your own your physician. Who knows how far away that is? I remember. I mean, truly, that's just like in the like. AI just for health, right? You mm -hmm. know? Um, I'm you know, sure I, it's going to be automated. I remember talking Everything to is. I remember talking to Corey about it on the podcast, like when we first when we first rolling these things out about how, I mean, it'll work its way up the chain, I'm sure, but the the doctors that see more of the the general stuff, the colds, the allergies, those sort of things that people can pick up just from symptoms. I guarantee you that people are going to be looking like the mm -hmm. hospital systems are going to be looking to make money, and they're like, listen, I can pay. I can pay a doctor hundred grand a year, or I can just use this free language model, build a little bot, spend a little money, build a little bot that people can jump in and ask it questions and then get prescribed allergy medication. You know, it'll code itself. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I, I think that that's, that's inevitable when it'll come, who knows, but it, does this article say like some dumbass questions people are asking? Mm. I don't even know if it does. It, oh, I, I remember now it just was saying like, you know, this article is being like, here's some safe questions you can ask you know, what does it say? Uh, let's see. It's really where something like AI can shine. Um, informational tool as opposed to being diagnostic. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, little things like, do I have the flu? Tell me your symptoms. You tell and it's like, you very well could have the flu. You should go to your doctor. Okay. There you go. Like, and I think it's the lane, the G, chat, GBT, chat GBT is very careful about giving you medical advice and everything you type in, it gives you, you know, two, two lines of, of an answer. And then it gives you two paragraphs of, of why you shouldn't take medical advice from it. So, and honestly, you may see, uh, you know, they're really pushing for AI regulation and, and laws and rulings and whatnot. So I'm sh you know, you, you may see some, uh, you know, regulations in the health field, right. That may be based around AI or, you know, what's accepted, what's not. Yeah. And who knows? I mean, everybody knows the, you know, the tried and true WebMD, you know, you sprain your finger and you get on and you find out you have fucking finger cancer and, you know, who knows whether ChatGPT is going to be the same and that, you know, they say in this article, the, the harm is, the harm is from both over and under diagnosis, right? So telling everybody they have cancer to telling somebody who's having a heart attack, they're just having shoulder pain, you know, like those things are real and can happen. And so there's going to have to be a lot of education and maybe, you know, Maybe 20 years from now, the Surgeon General is going to have to get on and warn people to not, you know, take ChatGPT too literally. I guess they'd have one of these things with their with the, the thumbnails of him going like this, like, what's wrong with ChatGPT? He's killing, he's killing our citizens. But the people are just going to have to realize that you need to still be with a professional that knows you, but you can use these things for very general stuff. And a lot of times it's going to tell you to go to your, your professional anyways, but don't be afraid of it. Just something interesting to think about is, you know, don't, don't let it be your doctor right now. It's not, it's not there yet. It's a little too, it's a little too dumb and naive, you know, but okay, that's it. I think we'll round out there. So thank you all for being here and listening to this new edition of the halfway healthy show. 
or whatever we coined this, but this is just me and Ziggy going through some health news. And uh, hopefully this is interesting to you. And if you find this entertaining, please let us know, send us a DM comment. We'll be posting this all over our social medias as well, just as another form of, of content that we can stay connected with you guys and with everything that's popping out in the world. So thank you all for being here. Peace and love. See you next time.